Hi, I'm George Fairbanks. David Garland and uh, Bradley Schmerl asked me to give a lecture in the software architecture class, and I'm really excited to do that. Now, the reason that that's uh, probably a good idea is that I spent time at Carnegie Mellon studying with those guys, and so I've been indoctrinated in the academic Carnegie Mellon way of doing software architecture. So I'm familiar with the ideas that uh, you're learning in class right now. I've also spent about a decade since then uh, applying this in industry. So uh, I'm in a good position to be able to talk to you about how things uh, go from the academic treatment to the industrial treatment. So in particular, uh, we wanna talk about four questions, like how does architecture work in practice? How do I go from requirements to an implementation? Can we preserve the promise and abstractions of architecture when we get down in the trenches of practice? And if my team or company isn't receptive to those ideas, what can I do to make them more receptive? How can I create the conditions so that this is gonna succeed? So in order to do that, uh, I've split uh, our efforts into two parts. The first part is baselining so that we can all start out and have a good discussion because we understand terms in the same way. And then the second part will be uh, a little bit of lecture that goes on inside of class uh, that uses the baselining. So the baselining uh, talks about four things. First is processes, uh, waterfall, iterative, and uh, incremental, and a, a variant of uh, iterative processes I call sedimentary, which is when you're not really doing it right, what goes wrong and what actually happens. Uh, the next baselining is around technical debt. You probably know this term as bad code, uh, but actually it's an inherent part of doing an iterative process correctly, whereby you aren't looking at all the requirements in advance. And so as a result, your ideas move forward and then you have to deal with the code that you wrote from the previous iteration that was dealing with a subset of the requirements. Uh, the third bit of baselining is over control of your project. And you can basically think about it as having two major types, intellectual control, where you think very clearly, you have an abstraction, and you use the abstraction to guide you to the right outcome, or statistical control, where you do it a bunch of times and you, you take uh, re representative measurements, and you hope to guide it to the right conclusion by minimizing the errors there. And then finally, uh, we're gonna chat in the baselining part about doing architecture in the 21st century, why exactly it's hard to do architecture within an iterative 21st century process. Then, uh, once we've got the baselining out of the way, in class, we're gonna talk about specifically the idea of theory building. And theory building is uh, what, I have, uh, been, what I've decided is the most likely way that we're gonna be able to squeeze architecture and iterative processes together in, in a reasonable way. Uh, the second thing we're going to talk about in class is what happens if you need to change the conditions on your team? How do you go about doing that so that they are receptive to architecture and you can succeed there? So I hope this sounds like a good idea. I'm uh, really excited about uh, being there and chatting with you very soon. And uh, so, so take a look at the baseline lectures and I'll talk to you soon.